Hello, trading friends, and welcome back to Forex Focus brought to you by Tasty FX. We are talking about the chances of a US dollar collapse coming out of a complete 180 in terms of the Fed's plans for the remainder of the year. If you were looking two months ago, it looked like potentially no rate cuts here in 2024. Now looking like two for sure, maybe even three. We're gonna dissect the odds as well as the effect on the US dollar and even rope in some employment data and the most important data points to track moving forward uh, when you're talking about what the Fed looks at and how they might change interest rates and how that might affect a US dollar that's been under a ton of pressure in recent weeks. We'll get to that price action in just a second, but let's start with the odds on the September meeting. Although if you are looking at the July meeting, um, they're not necessarily getting juicy, uh, but they're five to 10%, whereas it was a 0% chance of a rate cut in the July meeting a month or two ago. Um, still looking like SEP is gonna be that first rate cut. But uh, what's really interesting in the last couple of weeks, this distribution has gone from being 50-50, no change, 50-50 hike, um, to now 100% chance of an interest rate cut happening by the September 18 meeting. Uh, the market thinking that it will be a 25 basis point cut at the September 18 meeting. But there is the outside chance there, 10% uh, probably aligning with the chance of a rate cut in the July meeting and then what would be another one in September, uh, September sorry, if rates uh, do get lowered by 25 basis points in July, outside chance the market thinking of them being 50 basis points lower by the September meeting. Uh, and you've seen just a whole shift the last one to two months, and, and let's bring up the 10-year uh, Treasury yield to further show the timeline here, because if you go back to uh, March, April, and the start of May, you have 10-year yields at 4.5% and climbing. Two-year yields were back at around 5%. And uh, like I alluded to earlier, chances of any rate cuts happening back in that April, May time frame uh, we're looking slim, and now, as you can see here, looking at that benchmark 10-year yield, um, the interest rate market in the U.S. is uh, completely turned over, now trading 4.2% and uh, trending lower the last uh, several weeks here. Right now, trading the lowest uh, the 10-year has seen going back to the early part of this year. And you'll remember that those lows for interest rates in the highest interest rate cut uh, projections were all happening around end of last year, start of this year. Um, and that's when certain markets were projecting six to seven rate cuts. We've seen no cuts yet, uh, but now starting to price in uh, a few here uh, in tandem with, of course, as you could imagine, my friends, the U.S. Treasury markets, uh, huge benchmarks for interest rates in the U.S., are usually going to move uh, with a similar trend to projections for the Fed funds overnight rate, right? They're all U.S. interest rates, just different durations. Uh, and so in the last two months, you could look at it this way. The 10-year yield has lost 50 basis points worth of yield. And in the last two months, we've effectively priced in another two cuts if you're looking at end of the year projections. And let's throw up the December distribution. And you can see here the greatest odds, the center of this distribution curve lined up around 4.5%, which would be 75 basis points lower than the current rate. Uh, and like I say, about 50 basis points or two cuts, however you want to look at it. Of course, you can look at it in 25 uh, BIP cuts or just in BIPs themselves. Um, in the last couple of months here, interest rates across the U.S. have fallen by around, around 50 basis points and effectively priced in two more cuts than what we had thought in that April-May 
period, um, and that outside chance uh, there of 100 basis points lower, although that's looking pretty slim at around 6%. Um, but really interesting to see these curves change so drastically because my friends, it was really, really 50-50 on whether or not we were gonna get one or no cuts at all here in 2024 if you went back around two months. And now it's looking like uh, the futures traders out there are nitpicking between, is it gonna be two cuts or three cuts uh, where are we going to fill this thing out? Uh, and you might want to stay tapped in, especially if September becomes, uh, you know, a hundred percent chance of that first cut happening there. And Powell kind of confirms it. Um, all eyes will be on this December uh, rate beating just to see where rates will end the year. Will it be four and a half percent, or will it be closer to five percent? Obviously, right now we're sitting at that five and a quarter to five and a half percent range um, and it still is relatively 50-50 between three cuts or two cuts. So we'll see where that ends up. Um, but I do want to now bring in the US dollar piece of it because no coincidence whatsoever, like we talked about, Fed funds and treasury yields moving in a, a similar direction, uh, almost by equivalent increments uh, down to the BIP there. Let's bring in some pips and you see the US dollar has seen so much selling pressure, especially against this major pair here in the British pound, um, but also uh, seeing a, a lot of selling uh, in the US dollar against Australian dollar. Uh, Euro has gotten uh, pretty firm here, even though they've already cut once. Um, and it's because we'll go through these periods of seeing US dollar strength like we did the first part of this year. That first January until April, May was really strong US dollar. And you even see on this chart that uh, the pound at that point gets all the way down below 124 once again, now fighting all the way back to 130, right there on the precipice of 130, might have already hit that uh, depending on when you're watching this, um, but right up there at 130, more than 500 pips from the lows of a couple of months ago. Um, and now at the highest prices we've seen in 2024. Um, and 130 to 132 has really been the high for this pound dollar major pair uh, for the last couple of years. So we'll see if this market finally can break out, if this US dollar is finally in crash mode, um, as we've fluctuated, but it's by and large been a strong US dollar since the pandemic, this could finally be uh, an amalgam of ideas that brings this US dollar down because it's not only, oh, they might be cutting interest rates, Every central bank, uh, except for Japan right now, is looking for interest rate cuts as a lot of uh, the global economies have contracted from that expansionary period coming out of the pandemic. Inflation is high and they're looking to now lower interest rates after they've been hiking them the last couple of years. Um, but you also put in some interesting uh, uh, data points like the US employment data here, and it starts to look a little grim. And I know the Canadians out there have seen something similar in that Canadian dollar has really gotten hit pretty bad in recent trade. Um, and uh, this could be a problem here. And, and a lot of what people uh, who've been more dovish or on the side of interest rate cuts coming sooner have been speaking to is, has Powell and the Fed kind of missed the boat here? Now we're looking at the unemployment rate uh, in the US and the most recent print at 4.1% was not only higher than expected, but it was the worst print that we've gotten since the latter part of 2021, um, which is really when the global economies started to heat up. And so we're getting back into that pandemic era 
volatility, I would say, uh, economically. Um, obviously, the stock market is still trading around all-time highs, and 4.1% unemployment isn't the worst in the world. I, I believe that the central bank theoreticians usually aim for around 4% employment and 2% inflation, so not necessarily something to freak out about. But these trends, right, that, that's what people are getting spooked on. The, the fact that unemployment has gotten worse for now four consecutive or, or sorry three consecutive months and the u.s dollar in the same time has in the last few months seen a, a good amount of losses and the market continues to price in more rate cuts the last couple of months because they foresee the u.s economy not doing so well and so so quickly we've turned from you know worrying about inflation how sticky is inflation how sticky is inflation Inflation doesn't seem to be the worry these days. The worry seems to be, will employment and GDP hold up, or are we headed towards a, a recession and maybe a U.S. dollar crash? Now, a big piece of this Forex piece is, is always going to be relative performance, right? So I, I alluded to the fact that uh, Canada has already seen some employment Problems and of course geographically, the U.S. very close to Canada and uh, a lot of economic ties. So maybe seeing some of the same symptoms and Canada as well as the uh, European Central Bank are two of the major central banks that have already cut interest rates by 25 percent. And so, of course, we'll monitor U.S. data points. Uh, we'll be monitoring employment and inflation and GDP primarily to get a measure of how the U.S. is doing and, and how uh, long or short that dollar we might want to be. Um, but the relative game is going to be key here. And by that, I mean, you know, over the course of the next six months, will the U.S. interest rate fall back to 4.5% and the UK interest rate fall back to only 5%. If that happens, then that pound could appreciate further. Uh, same with any of these uh, relative uh, relationships. And, and of course, theoretically, just as a, an exercise, you would expect that if the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, and the European Central Bank all cut by 100 basis points in the same time period of, let's say, the next six months, um, that the currency market wouldn't really see any change, right? Because the the relative change would be zero. Um, of course, there would be changes to prices because other stuff would happen. But you really want to be watching the U.S. data um, and, of course, what the Fed is doing. But always comparing, okay, if U.S. employment um, just missed by X number of jobs, did U.K. employment miss or gain by Y number of jobs. And that's going to inform a lot of the price action in that pound dollar. And of course, that's just an example for all the major Forex pairs out there. We'll continue to monitor and dissect for you all the different stages along this recent potential collapse in the U.S. dollar. Um, but I mean, man, if that pound breaks through 130, we get that euro back above 110. It could be a pretty vulnerable spot for USD. We'll watch the Fed and the data points roll out. Thanks for watching.